to the first class on ethics, I wish to take this class in a little different way. Probably for the next 10 hours, we will go into different things like novels, novelas, stories, and then come back to our class in ethics. Now, when I did a research on how people have written the examination, how they have passed the examination, there are some IAS officers who are rank holders. They have not prepared anything for the class and still went and wrote the exam and passed the exam. How could it be possible? Probably this paper is an experiential paper and I will be sharing with you a lot of information on how you will practice ethics and then use it to write the examination. It requires very hard work and tomorrow I am going to take a class on deep work which is the latest book which gives information on how to do deep work. With this we will go to the first lecture. Yeah. Ethics. If you look at the picture of this person, his name is Nikolai Gogol. He was born in he was born in 18, 18th century and lived 42 years. And he created one of the greatest impact, not only on literature, but also on, on philosophy. Now, why I am motivated to do this class for you? Ethics is part of philosophy. What is the right thing to do and what is the wrong thing to do? What is the right consequences and wrong consequences? And I thought for the past two months and decided not to learn, preach or least teach ethics. Ethics can never be taught. I will discuss with you some of the literary classics, random concepts, which will help you to be a better person and leave it to you to enjoy learning ethics. Ethics it has to be practiced. It requires observation with the deep work. Deep work is a very important uh, aspect which I will discuss tomorrow. I wish you to connect the dots when you are in service. You will find how important this paper is for you. If you look at here, the various mammals, animals, everything, they would like to do only one thing. Eat, survive, and reproduce. They just want to eat because they want to survive and they want to reproduce. But this is not a human being does. Therefore, what is this human being does? Differently from that of animals or plants, this is something we need to look into. Now, one very important thing I would like to emphasize is it is meaningless if you read ethics, have no idea on how to practice it. Here is a link by and moral living. But she, is an as she says that she is an aspiring human, aspiring coder and writer, and aspiring towards freedom. 
Now, she says some very important thing for, for every one of us to ponder. We must all suffer from one of the two pains. The pain of discipline or the pain of regret. The difference is discipline weighs ounces while regret weighs tons. A fantastic statement. If you discipline yourself and strongly focus and deep do your deep work, what happens is you may have a plain pain and that will be only in ounces. But if you regret that you have not done it, then that pain will be in tons. You can go to the link that has given here. It is an article in Medium. If you want, I will definitely discuss in the next class. But I want you to definitely go through this entire link. You may, in fact, the topic of ethics starts with Greek philosophers. And it comes to the modern day. And by linking all these philosophical thoughts, in the philosophical thoughts one day, influence Is it relevant to read something about Aristotle or something about all the top class philosophers way back in the in 4000 BC, she says it is very much relevant even if you are working in a software organization. Therefore, now welcome to practice of ethics. It is not, though I have named it as lecture one, but it is going to be something like a theater. Now, Nikolai Vasilevich Gogol. He was born in 1809 and died in 1852. And Gogol was the first to use the technique of gross tech. What is gross tech? It is very important. From 1400, we have renaissance in the world. This is a time where arts, music and drama have made one of have made one of the finest impacts in the world. And this is yet to come to Russia. Gogol has written all his work in Russian but he is from present day Ukraine and his father was a Cossack. Cossacks are known to be warriors and his mother is from Polish origin. While he was there in Ukraine, he went to Russia and he wrote all his stories and novels in Russian. Since he is from outside Russia, he was not really, he was not justifying anything. He could observe very clearly things. Therefore, Grostek, I have given the complete at the as a notes under this particular slide. What is gross tech and the kind of gross tech arts that were there? If you actually see that it will be, if you see any gross tech art, it it will unmove you for some time. You will feel uncomfortable, and then you start having a pity or a liking towards it. This is something a fantastic kind of a thing that you can see. Now, if you see the story, the nose, 
or the over overcoat or nevsky prospect diary of a madman these are all the stories written by nikolai gogol and he nikolai gogol have a strange style of writing now i have shared the complete pdf document of the story with you because most of the russian authors work is copyright free in fact the the russian government during ussr they have liberally translated the works of gogol dostoevsky pushkin and other greatest thinkers into various languages and they spread the spread the greatness of this language to everyone everyone in the world the the, the language and philosophy now the technique that has been used by gogol is defamiliarization now these are all the things you should be familiar because when you are writing you are essays you will be using these kind of a things words known as disambiguation or defamiliarization i will explain to you each one of these words when you are going to write your essays his most of his writing for example uh dead souls he has written and the government inspector it is on pol political corruption that was taking place in russia during that time the play marriage and short stories were all the best known works he became a professor but later he left and went to a tour in europe he was suffering a lot he had lot of problems and ultimately he was in the hands of a a preacher who wanted him to burn his book second volume and third volume the dead souls and he burned and within a week he starved and he is dead when he was dead and buried later some of his uh, some of his admirers went and dug the entire grave they found that nikolai gogol was actually lying face down this people thought maybe gogol was buried alive in dead souls which i will discuss with you in future classes in dead souls what happens is in uh, during that time in russia every land has serfs for example you have in a land there will be 10 people who are working in that land and if you are buying that land you will get those 10 people very this we call it as serfdom and this serfdom was perpetuated by the governments and especially by czar now when a person buys a land he gets all the serfs with him therefore if i am for example if a person is having 5 acres land he will also get 50 serfs or slaves with that and for the slaves he will be paying tax now if 
the slaves die or the serfs die yerndutanga na if the slaves die he will continue to pay taxes until the next census time therefore there will be some dead people on whom he will be paying taxes chichini ko is a person who gets a brilliant idea of buying these dead souls telling that if he accumulates large number of people he will get lot of wealth and he pays money to the people to buy i think this is how still the same kind of fraudulent practices or being used by people is by people in order to defraud them this has been brought out by nikolai gogol in his work of dead souls now why did i chose this short story this is 16 pages short story the first thing is there is a the protagonist or the person who is there in the story is a collegiate assessor or a mid level bureaucrat and uh, he is is in russia during 1800 and if you read the story which will approximately take for you uh to us you will find lot of issues are being faced by him you will also be facing in your day to day work he will focus on corrupt society with subalterns treated like animals subalterns means the people who live in the periphery of the society for example the people who are working class who are who are working like the barbers like the rickshaw pullers like but uh, all these people belong to subaltern societies now this story influenced absurdism you know the absurdism pudumaya irukka word abdin paakringla in the absurdism only it is a philosophical thought later we will discuss about nihilism and absurdism in the absurdism like everything is something like absurd whatever we are doing in this world is meaningless and uh, one of the greatest uh, nobel prize winners camu ge kila camus nu solirukom but he is from france he gave the idea of sisyphus paradox in fact what happened is sisyphus has to roll a stone on the mountain once it he goes to the mountain again it falls back again he has to take it back this is exactly what human beings do and it is called absurdism in fact nikolai gogol's work have influenced pushkin pushkin and gogol are born at the same time and after after 10 years dostoevsky was born and dostoevsky has given one of the finest thought process for human beings he say many people many many learned philosophers consider dostoevsky as a psychologist and camus and kafka kafka is an another philosopher and other greatest philosophers were influenced by by gogol in the entire story la in the story namba padikaporam eppadi in the story 
நமக்கு வருது எப்படி நம்ம பண்ண போகிறோம் இது எல்லாமே நம்ம பார்ப்போமா ஒரு ஜஸ்ட் ஃபார் எ ஃபியூ செகண்ட்ஸ் ஐ வாண்ட் டு டேக் திஸ் ஓன்லி இன் இங்கிலீஷ் பிகாஸ் யூ ஆர் கோயிங் டு ரைட் யுவர் பேப்பர் ஓன்லி இன் இங்கிலீஷ் அண்ட் யூ வில் ஃபைண்ட் இட் இட் இஸ் டிஃபிகல்ட் பட் இட் இஸ் நாட் இம்பாசிபிள் ஒன்ஸ் யூ சூஸ் த டிஃபிகல்ட் பாத் and you find success in it you will definitely be happy at the results now knows why did google google chose knows so this is something very interesting because for centuries together knows is considered as a very very important part which tells about your culture your ability everything in fact the persons who got a very beautiful nose are considered to be or considered to be superior in race something very interesting for example google has a big nose and he is not a very attractive man and people used to make fun of google so they used to say that when i keep a spoon and on that i see your face and you will appear like that therefore google was google was extremely unhappy about the people giving importance for the physical characteristics and if you see in the egyptian and in various european european uh, traditions and culture if a man has to be punished for grave crimes crimes his nose will be cut which is a gravest punishment given to a man and you will also know in ramayana when lakshmana was uh, has uh, sent away surpanaka he has cut her nose therefore cutting the nose the word when you, whenever you are you are talking in a colloquial terms or in a general terms you will say he had a nose cut why nose cut why not hand cut or ear cut ear cut was also there see what happened is when vandals therefore there are a beautiful beautiful sculptures when the vandals come what they do is they first cut then they break the nose thinking that the entire uh vandals means the people who go and destroy destroy beautiful paintings so they vandalize everything now they have broken the nose and in egyptians who are god fearing they always when they were see whenever see the sculptures they always cut the ears so that gods can't hear your prayers these are all the historical and cultural artifacts we should really no even in our indian culture piercing the nose and piercing the ears is one of the practice which still continues you will see women wearing a lot of jewels on nose and it it is not there in other cultures western cultures but this practice of nose piercing or this nose and evaluating a person based on nose and its characteristics is very much there in european and in indian traditions therefore i strongly and it has been believed that google chose this nose as something people go by physical characteristics rather than by real competence of the people competence na ability what does nose symbolize in google you know google he was basically grostak he was living in st petersburg now 
this nose instead of be a part of the body it assumes a human body something like human body but only the big nose will be there but it acts big this shows that people have no competence no abilities if this if this nose can still live without any one of these abilities that is what is symbolized by goggle i have given here this has been published in contemporary and uh, you will see the publication was done by pushkin about his anna karina who we will be reading later now there are five characters in this entire story one is collegiate assessor kovalov in the collegiate assessor is basically a mid level bureaucrat and this mid level bureaucrat uh he wants to come up in his life and he is clean shaven and then he just moves around showing his weight upon upon people and this is the character trick of this kova lev then ivan ekolovich this person is a barber and you can see here clearly depiction of the 18th century lives of barbers or the subaltern people and you will also see nose as a character this character is a body part that is personified in this story by the way it 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 acquires a strong character knows now ivan ekolovich is a ஒரு <laughs> college gate assessor kovalev and there is a small character known as a doctor who comes in between therefore there are five human characters one nose you will find in the entire story slowly you will get familiarized with these characters and we will go into the entire story will be in three parts i will also read with you what has been given here ning in the pdf document open panni adile irukra chapter 1 part 1 three parts a kuduthirpaaru you can see here the picture of the barber shop during that time you will see that the barber though he clean shaves others makes look better he himself is not clean shaved is something really interesting now this story starts where his sign board was there velile elidirukum adala vande blood letting also performed on irukum ninga aacharapadala enna idu blood letting endradhu nu 
In 18th and 19th century, for many of the diseases, especially for, for blood pressure, therefore the barber, ha barber has a technique of cutting some veins where excess blood is removed from the body. In the process, what happens is that diseases are cured. A very strange treatment, which is not correct, but still it was being done. Now, what happened was, Vosipova was his wife, and he tells his wife, today I'm not going to have coffee, and you give me loaves of bread. And she thinks that, yes, you take the loaves of bread, no coffee for you, and she tosses the bread on his table. She has very low respect for him because he is a, he drinks a lot. Now, later, Gogol says, Ivan Ekolovich, like every self-respecting Russian craftsman, was a frightful drunkard. And although every day of the week he shaved other people's chins, his own was invariably unshaven. Therefore, one of the, especially if you look at the various Russian stories, you will find that subalterns or people who are who are in the lower strata of society, they drink a lot. They have heavy alcohol drinkers. And therefore, she has no great respect for him, but Vashilov Ivan Eklovish, he has nice respect for her. And Wozniski Avenue is the place where he lives. If you actually Google search for Wozniski Avenue, it is still there in St. Petersburg. Now, uh, what happens is he peeled two onions and took hold of the knife and he cuts his loaf of bread. And to his shock, he sees a nose inside it. When he saw a nose inside it, he was shocked. And he tells his wife that, what is this? I, have, I got a nose here. She says, you would have, you would have, you, she uses a very strong word, telling him, you know, you are a, you should, you should be, you are a dunce, and you are a dumb, right criminal. You have cut noses and you have put it here and police will come in search of you. She shouts at him. Now he is unable to say a word looking at the nose. And he was just imagining when his wife was telling that I will send you to your police station. He was thinking, oh, what I have done. He was thinking that the policeman is coming and questioning him, all this imagination has come into his mind. This shows how in the 18th century, the police have a strongest hold on people. And now what happens is he's feeling very bad, and what he does is, he puts this in a cloth and then walks. When he was walking, everybody knows him. They were calling him, you know, why, where you are going? In the cloth, cloth bag, or nose He wanted to 
விக்டுவல்ஸ் அண்ட் டி என்ற இடத்துக்கு போயிட்டு இருந்தார் அங்கே ஒரு பிரிட்ஜ் இருந்தது அந்த பிரிட்ஜில் ஹி வாண்டட் டு த்ரோ இட் இன் டு த பிரிட்ஜ் வாட்டர் ஸோ தட் நோ படி கேன் ஃபைண்ட் அவுட் ஹிஸ் நோஸ் at that time a policeman immediately calls him what you are doing why you have come over here and when he asked him he told honest to god sir i was on my way to see a customer and i thought i would have a look at quickly the river was flowing for i was going to a customer i wanted to see this customer and i was just looking at the river how it was flowing and to this the policeman told no don't lie you want to do some crime and this part ends because there was lot of fog and just it is left at that place in the part 1 now in the part 2 now the college gate assessor kovalev he woke up early and breath wow you know he was telling something like it he was breathing out and he stood at the dressing table he had a small on the nose he had a small pimple and even he had a pimple he wanted to know whether it is gone or still there but to his astonishment fight there is no nose it was clean he was shocked he could not do anything he immediately put his cloak and rushed to police commissioner's office and you will find that these collegiate assessors are a class by themselves there are bureaucrats and he named himself as major kovale now i will let little of later i will definitely talk why he called himself as major he was taking a small stroll he was walking and he was having a lot of his dress was impeccable all a white collar all a water pare he when he was going on the street he wanted to know some cab generally the cabs are run by run by horses and what happens is he wanted to really find out somebody who can take him to the take him to the police commissioner's office when he went to a pastry shop when he looked outside something shocking he was seeing yenna the romba shocking thing na he saw an extraordinary nose only nose with beautifully dressed with beautiful gold braided uniform stiff collar 
and with a sword it was it was just going by a beautiful cab he thought that it is a state councillor similar to an mla in our country oh therefore he this knows called the cab and he sat in that he went there he could not really do anything and slowly this cab stopped before a cathedral a church and he goes inside the church therefore when he was going inside the church there were a lot of beggar women and uh, he pushed them off and he entered the church and he could not really pray and he he was just thinking this man is a big man he's just a nose but he's a big man therefore he just gave a cough he just gave a cough he just gave a cough and he was telling my good sir and no so ask him what is that i am surprised sir i do think you should know your place and uh, you are in a church i am and he was just talking excuse me how can i explain that you are my nose and suddenly nose just went out of this place and then she just left the place by telling i don't understand anything be so good as to make yourself clear this is something very interesting ninga ungaleye nalla solikinga quick ah solunga this is how the bureaucrats behave they say that what is your problem quickly tell me so that i can solve can they really tell in 5 or 10 minutes what exactly they are they are going to happen and kovalev he could not really understand all these things oh he adjusted everything and uh, she could not really do anything and he just could not really talk to his own nose then he went inside they went out he took a cab da take me to the police commissioner's office in double quick time and he asked the commissioner is the commissioner at home witler kara commissioner it seems commissioner has just finished his dinner and he says that for next 2 hours i will not be i will not be doing any work because that is what i am going to uh, i need rest and this is something which you will also see in some of the in the behavior of some of the higher officials in our own country there is an ias officer in delhi who cleared a place meant for players to practice by 6:30 in the evening so that he can walk around with his dog can you understand the analogy of what was happening for russian people at that time is no much different from what is happening here therefore by 6:30 the guards will come and clear the entire place so that the ias officer can walk with his dog the players who are practicing for the commonwealth games 
have to clear because they they can practice up to 10 o'clock but because of his dog this has to be cleaned and this is what was happening in our country was also happening at that time now since now he could not get the police commissioner in time he wanted to give an advertisement in newspaper therefore he goes to a newspaper and then he talks about a pearl and asks the clerk why don't i give an advertisement that i have lost my nose and this man was using snuff powder and the mooku podi nu solluvanga tamil la in the snuff powder was being used extensively during those times in europe and in other places and this man was digging his nose and he told you know why do you, he advised him he what happened is somebody has advertised for a dog and she was ready to give 100 rubles and which is a big money during that time in russia therefore if you give an advertisement people will people will think that you know people i have lost and people will think that my newspaper is spreading new rumors because nobody will lo- lose a nose and uh, giving that kind of an advertisement will not be helpful now with this uh, he told uh, i can't put this in an advertisement now what i should do therefore he then he thought uh, how you can think is uh, it is a joking manner and uh, he feels very unhappy uh, and uh, he just leaves the place and he returned home and he got a footman footman or the persons who will be something like a janitor who will be staying in your house ella inda chinna velaigalukku ellam pandrathukku avangalukku footman appdi solli irpar what he was doing is he was looking at the lamp and he was just putting bubbles in the air to hit the lamp oh he was thinking he just called him swine and then went inside he was thinking what i have done so that i lose my lose my nose i am feeling extremely bad and uh, he thought to himself that somebody has sent demons to cut his nose and conspired about him then he immediately shoots a letter madam alexandra grigorievna and she wanted to marry his daughter to him but he was telling that i am a young man he was just pulling pushing aside the marriage proposal therefore he thought by this way she will get her daughter to be married to him and he writes a letter stating that i i am extremely unhappy that about you and uh, oh, you you have to get my nose back but still he ends the entire thing by telling that you are humble servant and this and uh, this letter has been written for which alexandra potrina says that of course i had an idea of marrying my daughter but still i have no idea of doing this kind of a conspiracy of sending your nose out when this letter was written ninga and the letter padichinga adha letter la or padicha piragu inda alavukku beautiful la letter eludhuvanga inda maadhiri thappana velaigal ellam panna maatanga and rumors were started spreading throughout russia i mean st petersburg and people were telling that you know they have seen a nose and the nose was giving commands and lot of people were standing and one enterprising man 
what has happened is he near the bridge he has kept a beautiful beautiful uh, near the bridge he has kept uh, uh, some place for everyone to see thinking that the body parts are moving and he charged 80 kopecks kopecks means something like paise uh, of our 1 rupee therefore he was charging 80 kopecks and they started making and there was rumors agog about the nose and how Uh, how uh, it is being done and enormous things are being told about this and it has become a major talk point in the town ninga vande ipo nammude google idellam paathina you will find all these things there you will find while serious things are happening in the country in the economy you will find something like about somebody wearing a scanty dress or somebody wearing not i mean somebody having a having a baby these are all the things become very important this is what exactly was happening during that time also people were thinking that the nurses can walk and the socialites they were thinking that oh this can happen and therefore he goes to a doctor and the doctor is of much help to him and the doctor says no and then he writes the letter to grigori ivana podichina therefore he could not really believe that she has done it and what happened is on 7th april now if you see that on 25th march it has happened on 7th april Kovalev wakes up with his nose reattached. He is carefully shaved by the barber and returns to his old habits of shopping and flittering with girls. We will go into the next class by studying different themes. Now, when in the book, I will be sharing you these thoughts, and in the part two. i'll be talking about themes and other areas thank you